I'm Joseph Snipe, scientific expert here at the EAT organization, and I'd like to talk to you about the ETER research plan, How to Reach Cubicle 10. If you have not yet seen the other ETER Talks presentations, I will highlight them throughout the talk to let you know where to find more details. My talk includes contributions from others here at the ETER organization and from the fusion community. ETER's goal is to harness fusion power here on Earth to demonstrate the viability of controlled fusion to generate electricity. The sun generates tremendous amounts of fusion power, burning plasmas of hydrogen. Fusion is the natural energy choice. The sun uses its massive size and gravity to confine the plasma with a confinement time of 170,000 years. ITER will use magnetic fields to confine the plasma in a machine called a tokamak. So here's an outline of my talk. First, I'll describe what is Q, and then I'll briefly say why we use a tokamak. Then I'll describe the essential elements of the world's largest tokamak, ITER, a prototype fusion reactor, with a few photos of the first assembly that is going on now. And then I'll describe integrated commissioning to prepare for ITER operation. And I'll show a few examples of plasma operation from existing tokamaks. And finally, I'll describe in detail the main steps of the ETA research plan from first plasma to Q equals 10. So what is Q? It is the fusion power performance multiplier. The fusion performance Q is a physics quantity that depends on multiplying three key parameters together known as the fusion triple product, N tau T. Q is the ratio of the fusion power out divided by the input power required to heat the plasma. Q is proportional to the fusion triple product Ni times tau E times Ti, where Ni is the plasma ion density, which will be about 1 times 10 to the 20th particles per cubic meter in ITER, which is about 1 millionth the density of the atmosphere. We will inject cryogenic frozen pellets of deuterium and tritium, isotopes of hydrogen, to fuel the plasma. Tau E is the energy confinement time of the plasma, which is the time it takes energy to diffuse out of the plasma, and which will be a few seconds in ITER, with a fusion burn duration of 300 to 500 seconds. We will be using superconducting magnets to produce magnetic fields to confine the plasma. And Ti is the plasma ion temperature, which will be 100 to 200 million degrees in ITER, or in the units we use in, in fusion, 10 to 20 kilo electron volts. This is about 10 times the temperature of the core of the sun. We will use resistive heating from up to 15 megaamps of, of current driven in the plasma and up to 73 megawatts of electron and ion cyclotron and neutral beam heating to raise the plasma temperature to these values. The conditions required to achieve fusion ignition were discovered in the 1950s as the fusion triple product, N tau T, greater than about 3 times 10 to the 21 particles per cubic meter seconds kilo electron volts, known as the Lawson criterion. There are many ways to try to exceed this number, and various approaches to fusion try different combinations. The sun has an extremely large tau. ITER's approach is to achieve moderate values in all three of these quantities so that the product of them will approach the Lawson criterion. So why do we use a tokamak? Well, because it's the highest confinement fusion machine on Earth. A tokamak is a Russian invention from the 1950s to hold a hot plasma. It has strong toroidal field produced by the blue coils shown here and it has a strong central solenoid, shown by the green coils here, which then drives a toroidal current, shown in pink, that creates a poloidal magnetic field, shown by the green arrows here, resulting in a helical tokamak configuration. There are additional coils, poloidal field coils, shown in gray, that provide plasma position and shape control. And note that we use capital R shown here to define the major radius of a tokamak. Tokamaks have achieved the highest fusion triple product, N tau T, 
of any controlled fusion device. This graph shows the fusion triple product versus the central ion temperature in the plasma for a number of tokamaks that have been built around the world. These experiments have achieved high n tau t values up to 1 times 10 to the 21 per cubic meter seconds kiloelectron volts and QDT values close to 1. Two tokamaks, JET and TFTR, have produced DT fusion powers greater than 10 megawatts for 1 to 5 seconds. ITER is designed to achieve QDT greater than or equal to 10 at a fusion power of 400 to 500 megawatts for 300 to 500 seconds. Tokamaks have achieved the highest fusion power of any controlled fusion device. Tokamaks have demonstrated that fusion works, but so far with Q less than 1. This shows the TFTR tokamak in Princeton, New Jersey, in the United States, that achieved a QDT of 0.27 using lithium conditioning to increase fusion performance. This shows the JET tokamak in Cullum, UK, that produced the highest controlled QDT value to date of up to 0.65. JET has recently also achieved a record DT fusion energy of 59 megajoules with about 10 megawatts of fusion power for more than five seconds. ITER will generate 10 times more fusion power than the power injected to heat the plasma, Q equals 10. But ITER is an experiment, and it's not designed to generate electricity, which re require a somewhat higher Q value to account for all the power used in all the ITER plant systems. I'll discuss that more later. ITER is the world's largest prototype fusion reactor. The essential elements of a prototype fusion reactor are, first, good energy confinement, which has been scaled from existing tokamaks and will be several seconds in ITER, as you can see from this scaling. The confinement increases with the machine size. The next essential element is balanced particle confinement to peak up the fuel particles in the hot plasma core while keeping most of the impurities out of the core. Plasma stability is also essential to keep the plasma stable at high performance. And a sophisticated plasma control system is essential to maintain stability and fusion burn control, particularly at high plasma performance. And as we can see, an acceptable level of heat exhaust to take in the energy out of the plasma and avoid overheating the walls surrounding it. And in addition, good plasma purity to keep from radiating the energy away to, that heats the plasma. ITER is Latin for the way because it's the way to high confinement. Predictions of fusion performance in ITER rely essentially on a few empirical rules to achieve high confinement called H-mode. The H-mode energy confinement scaling given by this proportionality for tau E is larger for higher plasma current, IP, and larger radius, R, of the plasma, but it decreases with larger input power, Pn. The H factor is defined as the energy confinement time divided by this scaling, and H needs to be greater than or equal to 1 for good confinement. This is one of the main rules that determines the large size of ITER. The next important physics rule is the H-mode threshold power, which is the minimum input power required to achieve H-mode. The power required to pass from low to high confinement mode, PLH, increases with the toroidal field, BT, the plasma density, N, and the plasma surface area, S. The H-mode threshold power also depends on the plasma species with the H-mode easier to achieve in helium than in hydrogen, and easier still in deuterium, and even still easier in deuterium-tritium. So we're fortunate that fusion is easier to achieve in DT than it is in a hydrogen plasma. Well, good energy confinement is essential for fusion performance. The fusion performance Q is very sensitive to the energy confinement H factor that I just described. This graph shows the maximum Q value as a function of the energy confinement H factor for several assumptions of particle confinement, A, B, and C. The ITER Q equal 10 scenario is expected to have H equal to 1 
based on empirical data from existing tokamaks that I showed earlier. ITER must find ways to improve the energy confinement while controlling the particle confinement. And this graph shows that with standard assumptions on particle confinement given by the curve B, ITER could achieve Q greater than 50 with just a 20% increase in the energy confinement. So ITER could achieve high enough performance to produce net electricity with only a 20% increase in the assumed confinement. This is a drawing of the ITER tokamak being built now in southern France, calling out its main components. Note the size of a man here for scale. The first assembly of ITER is going on now, and there was a previous talk on, the, on ITER assembly, so I'll only give you a quick visual tour of a few of the main assembly activities going on now. This shows the installation of the cryostat, which weighs about 3,500 metric tons. The cryostat provides vacuum and thermal insulation for the superconducting coils. This shows installation of the bottom poloidal field coil, PF6, which weighs about 330 tons. And next coil in installed was PF5, and it was placed in the tokamak pit as well. The first of the nine vacuum vessel sector subassemblies is now ready for installation in the pit, which includes two toroidal field coils and the vacuum vessel thermal shield. So once the tokamak is assembled and the cryostat is closed, we will begin the ITER operation phase with integrated commissioning to prepare for ITER operation. So how do we prepare for plasma operation? First, we'll pump down the cryostat and vacuum vessel and check for leaks and secure them. Then we'll bake the vessel to 200 degrees centigrade for several weeks to remove water and many impurities. And then we'll run a low density, low temperature, glow discharge cleaning plasma in hydrogen to remove more impurities from the vessel walls, like the ones shown here in the start tokamak. Then we'll monitor the residual gas analyzer measurements of outgassing impurities to reach the necessary vacuum conditions for plasma initiation and burn through that are defined in terms of achieving the low, low base pressure for hydrogen isotopes and even lower pressure for the impurities and below a maximum air leak rate. This graph shows the vacuum vessel base pressure gradually decreases with time as the vacuum conditions improve. The final preparations for plasma operation in ITER will be to energize the toroidal field and to keep a constant superconducting TF coil current for weeks at a time. Pulse the central solenoid and the poloidal field coils for a few seconds to many hundreds of seconds, and then monitor the plant systems with the Kodak supervisor system and pass control to and from the plasma control system or PCS before and after each pulse. The PCS controls nearly all aspects of plasma operation from plasma initiation, flat top and ramp down, including plasma fueling and heating and plasma stability. Robust plasma control is essential to high fusion performance. The plasma control system uses measurements from more than 50 diagnostic systems with thousands of data channels to act with about 20 actuators, including the heating and current drive systems, the magnets, the gas and pellet fueling systems to produce high performance burning plasmas. Now let me give you a few examples of actual tokamak operation from existing machines. This shows plasma operation on the D3D tokamak in San Diego, California, in the United States, where you see the inside of the tokamak and the inside of the control room. This video shows um, a D3D plasma with lithium injection, where it, which radiates green in the plasma. The colder edge region of the plasma shows up more in the visible light region of the spectrum. This shows plasma operation on the east tokamak in Hefei, China, where you can see the outside of the east control room and 
the inside of the control room. This video shows a greater than 100 second long plasma pulse with an infrared image on the left and a visible image on the right. And you can see that the, the, the graph below, you can see the plasma temperature it reaches about 10 uh, kilo electron volts, which is more than 100 million degrees centigrade, while the diverter temperature is maintained at around 200 degrees C through uh, water cooling of the diverter and diverter heat flux control using lithium powder that radiates green in the visible spectrum in the colder edge regions of the plasma. This shows plasma operation on the jet tokamak in Abingdon, UK, where you can see two views inside the control room. In this video, you can also hear from a magnetic pickup coil located inside the vacuum vessel changes in the magnetic field. Um, so you can actually hear the plasma in progress. Visible light radiates mainly from the colder edge regions of the plasma. Okay, now I'd like to describe some detail, in some detail, the ITER research plan, the path from first plasma to Q equals 10. The ITER research plan will proceed in four stages, starting with the initial construction and commissioning phase that is going on now, and then the first plasma and engineering operation phase will be followed by the second assembly and commissioning phase. Then we'll go to pre-fusion power operation one, followed by assembly phase three and integrated commissioning three, pre-fusion power operation two, and then assembly phase four and integrated commissioning four before we reach fusion power operation. In this way, we will go from first plasma to Q equals 10. So how will we approach high Q operation? Carefully, the ITER research plan describes a careful strategy to achieve high plasma performance operation up to a plasma current of 15 megamps. Plasma scenarios will proceed in steps in toroidal field and plasma current with key milestones at the first diverter plasma at 3.2 megamps and 2.65 tesla, the first H mode plasma at 5 megamps and 1.8 tesla, and half full performance at 7.5 megamps, 2.65 tesla. The toroidal field values are chosen to optimize heating schemes for central electron and ion cyclotron resonances. Confinement and fusion power increase with plasma current and toroidal field until we achieve full performance at 15 megamps and 5.3 tesla. Each increase in plasma performance must carefully control, avoid, or mitigate a number of plasma instabilities, particularly disruptions, which are the worst of the instabilities. A disruption is a sudden loss of the plasma current. Plasma instabilities can lead to a disruption where the plasma thermal energy is lost in a few milliseconds and the plasma current is lost in less than half a second. Disruptions are often due to a vertical instability that causes the plasma to suddenly move up or down and touch the walls of the machine. This causes strong electromagnetic J cross B forces on the vessel and in vessel components and very high heat loads on the plasma facing components and can possibly create an intense beam of very high energy runaway electrons that can burn through the plasma facing components and lead to a water leak inside the vessel. So it is critical to avoid or mitigate disruptions in the progressive startup approach to improve disruption control Every step to higher plasma current must progressively improve disruption avoidance, prediction, and mitigation schemes to ensure machine protection. Disruptions like this one on JET, where you can also hear the signal again, uh, are essential to the ITER research plan to, to quantify disruption loads at plasma current and commission the disruption mitigation system. ITER must first avoid disruptions through robust plasma control. This shows an Israeli F-15 aircraft that had an accident in mid-air and still managed to fly and land with only one wing, thanks to its sophisticated feedback control system. 
The ITER PCS needs such robust control to handle exceptions that may arise in the plasma or plant system faults during operation. ITER must also develop disruption prediction algorithms to predict a disruption before it occurs and develop effective disruption mitigation by injecting impurities into the plasma to radiate the plasma energy away to ensure machine protection. So now let's briefly go through the stages of the ITER research plan that begins with first plasma and engineering operations. Once integrated commissioning is complete and all the systems are ready for plasma operation, we will begin the first plasma campaign, which is scheduled to last about one month to achieve a plasma current of at least 100 kiloamps for at least 100 milliseconds in hydrogen at 2.65 Tesla to demonstrate the main tokamak systems are functional. Then the engineering operation phase will last about six months to commission the magnets to full magnet current. This will include a magnetic axis alignment measurement to determine where to position the blanket modules during assembly phase two to evenly distribute the plasma heat load. At the end of this phase, the first plasma may be attempted at 5.3 Tesla if there were any difficulties at 2.65 Tesla, since it'll be easier with a longer connection length and better ECH absorption at full toroidal field. The first plasmas will be brief and circular in shape with stainless steel temporary limiters and diverter replacement structures and inner wall ECH mirrors and a beam dump to absorb stray ECH power to protect the in-vessel components. The first plasmas will be small and circular in shape as shown in red in this simulated plasma equilibrium. The plasma current may reach up to about 0.6 megamps and last for a few seconds according to these first plasma simulations. Next will be assembly phase two to prepare for plasma performance. The main additional components during assembly phase two include the beryllium blanket and shield blocks, the tungsten diverter cassettes, the complete ECH system up to 20 megawatts, commissioning of the in-vessel vertical stability coils, the edge localized mode or ELM control coils, and the ex external correction coils. The main diagnostic systems will also be installed as well as two pellet injectors for fueling and for controlling edge localized modes with frozen hydrogen pellets, as well as the disruption mitigation system. Then we will begin pre-fusion power operation one with plasmas in hydrogen or helium to avoid fusion reactions. The main elements of pre-fusion power operation one phase are to determine the plasma control capability, including magnetic control, de density control, first wall protection, aerofuel control, and initial ELM control and then to develop diverted plasma scenarios, including the first diverter plasma, the first H-mode plasma, half full performance plasma, and then possibly increase the plasma current and toroidal field up to 10 megamps and 5.3 Tesla. The increase in plasma current will depend on successfully developing disruption, prediction, avoidance, and mitigation. And of course, we will also operate the, the electron cyclotron heating system up to 20 megawatts in all launchers with a possible upgrade to 30 megawatts if it's approved. Now I'll briefly describe plasma magnetic and density control. The PCS will control the CS, PF, and in-vessel VS magnets to control plasma initiation, inductive plasma current, position, and shape. The inductive plasma current, shape, and, pos and radial position control need about five seconds of settling time. But elongated plasmas like those shown here <clears throat> are naturally unstable and will drift up or down within about 100 milliseconds. So we need in-vessel VS coils to control the vertical stability on this fast time scale since their fields are not slowed down by penetration through the vacuum vessel. The vertical position is also controlled by on a longer time scale with the slower X vessel VS1 system of PF coils shown in green here. <clears throat> Density control with gas and frozen hydrogen pellet injection is modeled with a particle transport in three zones. 
First, a large neutral inventory in the vacuum region, a wall source and sink neutral exchange, and ionization and recombination in the plasma edge. An iterative learning control model, or ILC model, tracks the density trajectory in operation space with both gas and pellet fueling to remove experimental trial and error, as shown in this figure. An intrinsic time delay from the gas valves and 20 meter long gas injection pipes makes ILC particularly valuable for robust density control. Plasma scenarios will change in PFP01 due to the beryllium blanket and tungsten diverter. Beryllium removes oxygen and hydrogen from the plasma, requiring more fueling but less heating power for plasma initiation and burn through. Plasmas will initially start up leaning against the inner wall limiter. Then diverted plasma scenarios, like the one shown here, may require a plasma current greater than about three megaamps for robust magnetic control. To limit the first wall heat flux, it should be possible to achieve first diverted plasmas with plasma currents less than three and a half megaamps. According to the H mode threshold scaling that I described earlier in the talk, 20 megawatts of ECH heating in PFP01 should permit early H mode operation and initial ELM control development in helium plasmas. If 30 megawatts of ECH is approved for PFP01, then H mode operation in hydrogen will be possible at low toroidal field, as shown in this simulation. The next plasma scenario milestone to achieve in PFP01 is half full performance at 7.5 megamps and 2.65 tesla in L mode, as shown in this simulation with a 150 second long flat top in plasma current. These half performance plasmas provide good tests of plasma stability, nearly equivalent to full performance, but with lower disruption loads. If all goes well, we may increase the plasma current up to 10 megamps at 5.3 tesla to finish the PFP01 phase. Then we will have assembly phase three to prepare for high performance operation in hydrogen or helium. Assembly phase three will ensure that the in-vessel ELM control coils are fully operational to control edge localized modes at moderate plasma performance and install four pellet injectors for increased fueling and higher frequency pellet pacing for better ELM control, and additional diagnostics for higher performance plasmas, as well as additional uh, 20 megawatts of ICRH heating and 33 megawatts of neutral beam heating and the diagnostic neutral beam. We will also install the initial test blanket modules which will be installed to test them in preparation for fusion power operation. The TBM program is an important technology program within the ITER mission to test tritium breeding blanket technology. The TBMs include lithium containing materials inside plasma facing ferromagnetic steel. Neutrons from the fusion reactions in ITER will bombard the lithium and transform it into tritium so that fusion reactions can generate tritium fuel. When optimized, this will allow future fusion reactors to generate their own tritium fuel. The first TBMs will be installed in PFP01 to assess the impact of the stray magnetic fields that they produce from their ferromagnetic components on plasma performance. Then we will begin pre-fusion power operation two that will develop high performance plasmas in, in hydrogen or helium to again avoid fusion reactions until fusion, until high performance operation is well developed. The PFPO2 will develop high performance operation by first commissioning 20 megawatts of ion cyclotron and 33 megawatts of neutral beam heating. These new actuators are needed to develop much more plasma control capability, including plasma instability control, diverter heat flux control, and plasma profile control. The additional heating power will make H mode operation possible at half field and current, and then plasma scenarios will be developed to full field and current in L mode. The, then we will further develop disruption, prediction, avoidance, and mitigation. 
High performance will approach plasma stability limits, increasing the need for robust plasma control. I don't have time to explain all the possible plasma instabilities in detail, so I will only show two of them here. Neoclassical tearing modes are a class of instabilities that can occur at high plasma performance that will be controlled with localized electron cyclotron current drive inside an unstable magnetic island in the plasma. ITER will have four steerable upper port launchers to inject up to 20 megawatts of EC power into the magnetic island. This graph on the left shows the NTM stabilization in ASDEX upgrade, where you can see the amplitude of this rapidly oscillating mode in black decreasing down to the noise level with electron cyclotron heating power. High performance H mode operation is expected to destabilize edge localized modes or ELMs. ELMs are repetitive instabilities in the plasma edge that kick out bursts of particles and energy resulting in high heat flux on the plasma facing components. The ELM control coils will slowly rotate the magnetic perturbation at between one to five hertz to average out the diverter heat flux. This graph shows ELM control experiments on the Aztecs upgrade tokamak. Another technique for ELM control is to rapidly inject small pellets to trigger ELMs and increase the ELM frequency up to 30 to 60 hertz to reduce their heat flux. This graph shows the pellet pacing technique on Aztecs upgrade that increases the ELM frequency with increasing pellet injection frequency. <clears throat> with 73 megawatts of heating power, the diverter heat flux will need to be controlled through diverter detachment by injecting impurities and fueling gas into the diverter to radiate the plasma energy away. These graphs show the evolution of the diverter temperature with increasing gas injection in Aztec's upgrade, starting with an attached diverter shown in blue with high diverter temperature, and then the onset of diverter detachment shown in green, and a detached diverter shown in yellow with low diverter temperature, and finally full detachment shown in red with very low diverter temperature. The control of plasma parameter profiles across the radius must share the available actuators. Plasma performance depends on the shape of several plasma parameter profiles. Plasma stability depends on the current density profile safety factor, and this movie shows control of the safety factor profile in D3D with feedback on the driven current to keep the safety factor in the core within the region of 1.5 to 2 for improved stability. The PCS will control profiles of the plasma temperature, pl density, current density, and rotation. The actuators are shared for multiple simultaneous control functions with priorities that are changed in real time depending on plasma conditions. The full heating power in PFPO2 will allow H mode operation and ELM control first at 5 megamps and 1.8 Tesla as shown in this simulation. The effects of the test blanket modules on H mode performance will be assessed and compared with earlier H mode performance in PFPO1. This graph shows the magnetic field perturbations due to ferromagnetic TVMs that can impact H mode performance based on TVM mock up experiments in D3D. The effects of higher toroidal field ripple at 1.8 Tesla from ferromagnetic inserts in the vacuum vessel on H mode performance will also be assessed. And then the high power will also allow H modes to be established at 7.5 megamps and 2.65 Tesla. And we will then extend operation to 15 megamps and 5.3 Tesla in L mode with the full 73 megawatts of heating power, as shown in this simulation. Then we will have assembly phase four to make the final preparations for fusion power operation. The systems needed to prepare for fusion power operation include having the tritium plant operational, having the complete fusion diagnostics installed and ready, and the nuclear test blanket modules installed. We may also upgrade the disruption mitigation system 
and the neutral beam heating system with an additional 16 and a half megawatts of heating power if needed. <clears throat> then we will have all systems ready to begin fusion power operation to achieve full fusion performance in deuterium tritium. The steps to reach full fusion performance in DT are to further develop plasma control capability for fusion burn control, alphane eigenmode control, and fully integrated control. The use of deuterium will start the nuclear operation phase in ETIC. This will be followed by trace tritium operation to ensure effective tritium procedures and measure initial transport, fusion power, and confinement changes. Then the tritium concentration will be increased up to a 50-50 DT ratio to maximize fusion power production. The DT scenarios will include H mode at 7.5 megamps and 2.65 Tesla, and short pulse DT H modes at 15 megamps, 5.3 Tesla, up to Q equals 10. And then improved plasma control capability will then allow long pulse Q equal 10 DT fusion burn up to 300 to 500 second duration. The additional plasma control capability needed for the fusion power operation phase includes nonlinear fusion burn control of the DT isotope mix, the auxiliary heating power, the energy confinement time, and impurity injection to control the fusion burn. The fast ions produced by neutral beam injection, ICRF heating, and the energetic alpha particles produced by fusion reactions are expected to drive unstable, high-frequency alphane eigenmodes that can redistribute the fast ions and reduce the fusion burn, like the modes shown here on Aztec's upgrade. Finally, all of the control functions described previously need to work simultaneously or on demand in an integrated way with shared actuators for multiple control functions like those represented here. High power and high performance require robust control. Because of the isotope dependence of the H mode threshold that I described earlier, the threshold power is lower in DT plasmas. Already in deuterium, there's a significant margin above the H mode threshold that allows high performance H mode and ELM control at 7.5 megamps and 2.65 Tesla. This shows such a simulation of a deuterium H mode. Performance improves even more when tritium is added, and at a 50 50 DT concentration, this will reduce the H mode threshold further and add central heating by the fusion generated alpha particles. Finally, the 15 megamp 5.3 Tesla baseline Q equal 10 DT scenario will be developed as shown in this simulation, which predicts stable fusion burn with acceptable confinement and impurity levels. The control of the entry to and exit from the fusion burn is sensitive to the input power, electron density, and radiative power evolution. Full integrated control still remains to be done. Through the hard work of the One ITER team around the world, we will solve the challenges ahead, achieve the ITER goal of Q equal 10, demonstrate the feasibility of controlled fusion power here on Earth, pave the way for a demonstration fusion reactor, and help solve the world's energy needs. Thank you very much.